Hello and welcome back to Tingle 5. Following the success of last week's video with the 3DS Street Pass, I've decided to do it again. But this time not just for the Raspberry Pi version 1 and 2, we're actually looking at the Raspberry Pi 3 this time. And Reddit user Pinchy McPinch has actually made an image of this version of Pi Pass already. And the advantage of using the Raspberry Pi 3 here is that the Raspberry Pi 3 actually has built-in Wi-Fi, so we're eliminating the need for that USB Wi-Fi card we used before. So what you want to do is go to the Dropbox and download everything in there and then we open up the download itself and we go into the 7-zip portable and the 7-zip portable is just to get the image out of the compression so we're going to extract 7-zip portable inside here right now and then we're going to open 7-zip portable to actually open up everything else this download does also come with the portable version of Win32 Disk Imager it's up to you if you want to use that, uh, I don't, I'm going to show you how to use it doing Rufus because I much prefer Rufus itself. There's also a manual installation guide for those of you who want to follow it. Uh, all credit again to Pinchy McPinch. So when 7-zip portable is extracted, we can open it up using 7-zip.exe at the bottom there. We open this up and then we go into the actual file itself. So it's going to take you to the top directory and then you want to navigate down to your download destination. Once you've navigated into it, what you want to do is simply just copy the image out of this into somewhere else. So I'm going to go back a couple of steps here and we're going to copy the image straight out of 7-zip onto the main directory. And what this is doing is just uncompressing the image so we're able to use it and burn it down to our Raspberry Pi. To do this, it doesn't take long at all. You just wait for the bar to move all the way to the right and when the bar has moved, we are pretty much ready to burn it to a Raspberry Pi. And the program we used before is Rufus. For those of you not familiar, I'm going to put a link in the video description. So now the image is ready, we're going to open up Rufus and burn it straight to our micro SD. The recommended minimum size for this micro SD is 2 gig. So make sure you've got a 2 gig or above micro SD going into your Raspberry Pi. Slightly off screen, I'm just about to open Rufus. So Rufus, if you don't know, is what we're going to be using to burn the image directly onto the SD card itself. You can't just drag and drop the files, unfortunately. What you need to do is change this from FreeDOS to DD image, And we're going to use the image we just extracted with 7-zip just a couple of minutes ago. Now what you can do is check the SD card for bad sectors. If you haven't used the SD card for a little while, then I recommend this. However, I have, so I'm going to not do that and just burn it straight to there. Just make sure you burn to the right one. Now this takes no time at all to complete. As soon as it is, what we want to do is eject the card. So you want to safely remove it from Windows and don't just pull it out of the machine. So if you go into my computer and you can safely eject it from there, like so. Then we're going to put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi 3. Now I'm using a clear case for mine, but it doesn't matter what case you use or anything like that. But what you do need to do is connect it up like so. All you need is an ethernet cable and a Raspberry Pi 3 power supply. Now you can't use the Raspberry Pi 2 power supply, the Raspberry Pi 1 power supply, as the Pi 3 actually takes a little bit more current. And actually you're done. You don't need to do anything else, you don't need to do any configuration like you did before. But what's happening is every five minutes this is running a script which then activates it or not. So this runs on a 20% chance as default, so every five minutes it rolls a five-sided dice, essentially, and says, am I going to bring up the AP or not? And I left it for 30 something minutes. So we're up to 37 minutes at the moment. And I got my first street pass right now, straight from the Raspberry Pi 3 itself. I'm absolutely certain it came from the Raspberry Pi 3 and there is no one else around here with a 3DS. So let's open it up and have a look. We open up the 3DS and we have a look how many people we've street passed. If we pass the point, we've passed about six people is usually the case. Nintendo, please don't flag this video. I'm just demonstrating. So Street Pass Parsa, Street Pass Hits, and we have six. That's hitting our relay. So if you want to change these settings for you advanced users, you're going to need two more programs. One's called Fing, and one's called Putty. Fing is a network analyzer. It's going to help us find the IP address that the Raspberry Pi itself is on. So Fing is here, and I'm going to just scan it up using it on iOS or Android. Either one works. And I can see that 1.12 down here, so 192.168.1.12, .1 is my Raspberry Pi 3, as it identifies as Raspberry Pi, and I don't have any more on the network. And if you do a quick Google search for Putty, you'll find this page, and you can download Putty, and this is what's called an SSH client. So this is what we're going to access the Raspberry Pi 3 from. So you're going to enter the IP address, 
Uh, the IP address has changed since last screen as I moved the Raspberry Pi around a little bit and it's actually on 1.16 now instead of 1.12. And then what you're going to do is log into the machine. The username is Raspy and the password is Pinchy after the Reddit user. And it's completely inside the guide there, so if you need to reference it, it's inside the download itself. So what we can do is navigate around. We're actually connected to the Raspberry Pi at the moment, and this is how we're going to be using it. So if you do cd slash, this takes us to the top directory, and ls shows us what's there. So we're going to go into PyPass and have a look what's inside. So we'll do another ls, and we've got three scripts. And what we want to do is edit the runchance script. So if we do sudo nano runchance.txt, and we look inside here, and we can see at the bottom we've got probability equals 20. And this is just a default value. At the moment it's commented out. So what we're going to do is delete the hash and the space, put it on its own line and change the probability to 40. And that will increase the amount of street passes we have. This will also increase the amount of time that the access point is on. So what we want to do next is check the logs. So if we can check the log file and we can actually see if it's working or not. So if we go into var slash log, and inside here we have a file called host apd and what we want to do is use nano host apd and then go into it and see what the log file is doing we're not using sudo for this because we're not changing anything all we're doing is viewing it so make sure you type nano not nando and we look inside the log and we can see at 2030 uh, this time it brought it up with a 20 percent chance and it hasn't had a chance to run on the new settings yet but a couple of seconds later i ran it again at 236 and the probability was set at 40, now with a 40% chance, and it still didn't bring it up. So I hope you guys have found this video useful, and it'll help you with your Raspberry Pi 3 setup. Uh, if you like what you see, don't forget to share the video, and follow me on all the relevant social media. Thank you for watching, everyone.